Oh, Mr. William, mm -hmm. nice key, so shiny, eh? Yeah, the souvenir. Oh, uh, where, where is it from? Oh, I got it in Cambodia seven years ago when I was there. Wow, for seven years, ah? Uh, how do you manage to keep it so shiny? What kind of material is this? It's actually aluminium, oh. and aluminium has a layer of oxide that oh. actually prevents it from rusting. Oh, okay. Mm. Wow, then must you take seven years to go and create the oxide to make it so shiny? No, you can just react with oxygen in the air, and oh. you get the layer of oxide. Uh -huh. Uh, so, I mean, this takes seven years, I think it takes quite long, right? Can you help me make it faster, please? We can. We can actually use electricity oh. to increase the layer of oxide okay. and to prevent this from rusting. Oh, that's quite nice. Yeah, so let's explore this inside our notes. Yes, sure. So, if I take a look at the last concept, which is on industrial application of electrolysis, uh, the first application we're going to look at is going to be anodizing of aluminium, right? So, um, the setup is going to be at the bottom over here. Now, as the name suggests, right, um, uh, anodizing of aluminium, Mr. William, where do you think I should put this aluminium? At. Anodizing obviously tells us we have to put at the anode. That's right. And what does uh, what kind of uh, half reactions uh, happen at the anode? Oxidation. Oxidation. So what's going to happen is that we hope that at the anode over here, uh, you're going to produce oxygen gas so that the oxygen will react with the aluminium to give you that uh, extra layer of aluminium oxide over the aluminium, right? That's okay. right. So we're going to see the setup over here. Uh, the electrolyte we're going to use is going to be sulfuric acid. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to pay attention to what reaction is happening at the anode. So the steps that we have gone through earlier will all follow. First of which is to tell us what are the species that are present inside the electrolyte. Uh, what are they, Mr. William? Uh, sulfuric acid, so we have H+, mm -hmm. we have SO42-, we also have water that's present. That's right. So we're going to focus solely on the uh, anode now, and can you tell us what species migrate towards the anode? Anions migrate to the anode, so we have SO42- mm -hmm. moving there, we also have water moving there. That's right. Now, um, following which, we're going to write out their half equations as well as their E0 values, which I have them all over here. So at the anode, uh, what kind of values am I looking out for? I'm looking for the one that's the more negative to mm. do oxidation. That's right. So between these two, the one that is uh, more negative will be the one for plus 1.23. So the water is going to get oxidized to the oxygen. And of course, that's perfect because the oxygen that was produced is just beside the aluminum, right? It is going to react with the aluminum to give you that protective layer of aluminum oxide. Okay. Uh, we did not really focus on the cathode over here because there's not of interest. So normally we use an inert uh, electrode. Uh, we we'll just let the reactions run. Uh, all the steps will just happen as per normal, but that is not the interest for this particular uh, application. Okay, so that's quite interesting, right? This is why this key can actually last for seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're using electricity to produce oxygen at the anode and to coat this with a layer of oxide. Quite uh, amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hey, Mr. Leung, what are you doing? I'm trying to figure out what is the metal that is inside this wire uh, underneath this uh, rubber tubing. Uh. Ah, yeah. Hey, don't spoil this. I'll tell you, okay? Oh. It's actually copper. Oh, okay. Uh, why, 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 why copper then? Oh, actually, do you know that the best electrical conductors mm. is either silver or copper? Oh. But in our homes, we always will use copper. Ah, why, why can't I use silver? Because silver is like very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it only happens when I'm super rich, right? Yeah. But then the problem is, we are yeah. poor, yeah, okay. we are poor, right? So, we have to use copper lah? Yes, we have to use copper. Okay. Um, then in that case, the copper must be pure, is it? Yeah, exactly, because if you have impurities in the copper, mm. it's going to reduce the conductivity. So oh. we have to make sure that it's 100% pure. Ah, uh, how do we do that? Do you know that the ores, right, the copper ores that we extract from the ground, it's not 100% pure. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we actually have to go through a process mm. called purification mm. to make the copper 100% pure. Okay. And how exactly do we do it? Uh. Of course, by using electricity. Oh, everything is with electricity lah. Exactly. Just shock everything lah. Shock everything. Okay, so we're going to see this as the second application, industrial application of electrolysis. So we'll go back to the notes over here mm. and we'll see what uh, electrolysis can do for us. Okay? okay. So the setup over here is this. We're going to, we're going to have a uh, uh, electrolysis like to be uh, copper sulfate mm -hmm. and to the impure copper ore that Mr. William was talking about, we have to attach it to the anode and we are going to use a pure copper to be at the cathode. So this is going to be the setup. The main idea over here is that I'm going to I'm going to start to push all this pure copper over here mm -hmm. over to the other side yep. and I hope that all the impurities inside the ore will just disappear somewhere and not deposit onto the cathode here. Yep. Okay, so the, mm -hmm. the general reactions are here. Copper, uh, at the at the anode, the copper will become copper 2 plus, and at the cathode, the copper 2 plus will turn back into copper. I do not want to have any uh, other reactions. Okay, So we're going to use the same methods as we have uh, done for all the electrolytic uh, uh, cell. The first step is always to figure out what the species are present. So Mr. Mm. William, can you remind me again, if I look at this electrolyte, what is present? So we have copper sulfate as the electrolyte, yes. species present, we have copper 2 plus, mm -hmm. we have sulfate, yep. we also have water. That's right. Now I'm going to focus solely on the uh, anode now. Mm. Uh, what are the species that are going to migrate towards there? 
all the cat I, uh, anode, right? The anode, yeah, so yes. all the anions will migrate to the anode, okay, right? So, so yeah. we have sulfate going there, mm -hmm. we have water going there. Mm -hmm. but, but, but be very careful yes. because copper is an active electrode. Ah, so, so it that's... may take part in the oxidation process. That's right. Mm. So when I write out the half equations, I not only must add in the sulfate and the water, you must also make sure that the copper is present there. That's okay? right. Uh, at the anode, uh, your oxidation is going to happen. So mm -hmm. we're looking out for the enode value that is going to be the uh, least positive, uh, sorry, the, the smallest value. Yes. Yeah. So which one is the smallest over here? Over here, you can see that the least positive, as you were saying, is going to be copper, 0 0.34. That's right. So in this case, your copper is going to turn into your copper 2 plus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just fill this in first. So you, you're going to turn into copper 2 plus, yep. and that's exactly what I wanted. Copper yep. turn into copper 2 plus. Mm. Now, moving back to the cathode over here, we see that uh, what are the species that are going to migrate towards there? The cations. The cations. So your copper 2 plus, mm. your water, they're going to migrate towards there. That's right. So once again, quote out the half equations, copper and, uh, sorry, copper 2 plus and water. And uh, cathode is going to be undergoing reduction. So we're looking out for the value that is more positive. So when I look at this, uh, definitely it is going to be the Cu2 plus turning into Cu again. Okay. Mm. So this is exactly uh, achieving my objective. The Cu2 plus is going to form your Cu solid, which is going to deposit onto the cathode. Uh, the, the cathode will thicken with pure copper here. That's okay. right. Uh, unfortunately, we say that hey, there's going to be impurities inside the copper uh, ore, right? Mm. So of course, I think there's something new that's going to happen here. Mm. Yep, it, it's not that simple, right? That's okay, right. so let's now look into the anode and we look at the impurities and we mm. really see what happens to the metals, mm. right? So as you can see from the table over here, mm. uh, there are different types of metals that you can find in the anode. Mm. So what we have done is we have labeled on the right hand side, this is the anode where all the different metals are. Mm. You have zinc, iron, and it goes all the way down to gold. Mm. Whereas on the other side, this is where uh, our uh, cathode is taking place and the reduction is taking place. Now you do notice using your copper as a point of reference, there are some of them that are more reactive than copper. Mm. So Mr. Liang, which one is more reactive? So more reactive, uh, I mean, based on secondary school, you have learned that zinc and iron, uh, they are more reactive than copper, right? Mm. Uh, this is corresponding by a lower uh, E-naught value as compared to copper. Okay. okay. So conversely, those numbers that are higher than that of copper will mean that they are going to be less reactive than copper. Okay, so we're going to break it down using copper as our reference. Mm. And remember that majority is copper, right? Mm. The rest of them, whether you're more reactive, less reactive, they form the minority, but mm. we have to accept the fact that some of them are more reactive. Mm. Okay, so let's kickstart the electrolysis process, mm. right? Right at the start, let's focus on the anode. Mm. Who is most likely going to get oxidized? Will it be copper to begin with? Uh, unfortunately, no, because we notice there are impurities, right? Yes. And uh, for uh, anode, I want the number to be as small as possible or, or more negative uh, as possible. Mm. So it turns out, I think zinc mm. uh, will undergo oxidation first, followed by iron, mm. and then followed by copper. That's right. Okay, mm. so let's take it this way, right? If zinc is present, the first thing that's going to happen is zinc is going to get itself to zinc 2 plus. Mm. It's going to enter the solution. Now, when it enters the solution, this thing is going to become a cation, mm. all right? And this cation will start to migrate towards the cathode, mm. and he will try to do reduction, isn't it? That's right. And that means he's going to compete with Cu2 plus that's already present in the solution. Mm. Who is more likely to get reduced? Now, so once again here, we're under reduction, we're looking out for the value that is more positive. Uh, if I compare the e naught values, uh, of course, it's going to be copper, okay? The zinc 2 plus will not undergo reduction here. Yep, okay, so you can see, right, although zinc has entered the solution as zinc 2 plus, but it can never get, uh, it can never get reduced yes. at the cathode. So what's going to happen is just going to get stuck inside mm. the solution, right? You must accept that what's going to happen at the cathode is copper 2 plus will still be the one that goes through the reduction process, mm. all right? And bear in mind that impurities are not present in huge quantities. Mm. So after a while, all the zinc is going to be used up, mm. then the process is going to repeat and the next species that will enter the solution is going to be iron, entering as iron 2 plus. Mm. So I think for the same reason as we discussed, iron 2 plus will never get reduced mm. at the uh, cathode. So once this thing is done, then who comes next? Uh, then our main uh, character, right, uh, is going to be copper, right? So because copper is going to be present in the largest amount, so the main idea, the, the main copper is going to get uh, oxidized here. And of course, on the other side at the cathode, it's going to get reduced. All right, so we can see that uh, the fate of all the metals that are more reactive than copper, mm. as you can see below, is they will readily be oxidized at the anode, but they will never get reduced at the cathode. Mm. This is always what happens to more reactive metals. So in a way, the solution is kind of like contaminated, right? Correct. It will not be pure Cu2 plus anymore. Mm. And what about those that are less reactive? What about silver and gold? Yes, so even uh, they're present in smaller amounts as well. Yeah. Uh, but of course, being less reactive than copper, very good. They don't even react. 
So what's going to happen is that your silver and gold will just remain as silver and gold. And because as your copper starts to get um, oxidized, right, all your silver and gold will now fall down to the bottom of a container. So there's a very specific name for that. It's called anodic sludge. So uh, at the bottom of the anode, you will start to see some dirt, some impurities over there. Right? Uh, maybe I can purify those to become rich, right? Yes. Because they're silver and gold anyways. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So at the end of the day, the conclusion is this. For those that are less reactive, very simple, it just falls down to the bottom. Those that are more reactive will get oxidized, but they're going to stay inside the electrolyte. And that is exactly what we wanted. We do not want the impurities to go into the, into the cathode and contaminate my pure copper, right? That's right. Mm. Right. So does it mean that the amount of Cu2 plus we mm. have in the solution mm. is going to stay fixed throughout the process itself? If I think about this, it feels like hey, on one side, somebody is producing a Cu2 plus, on the other side, the Cu2 plus is getting uh, used up to give me a copper. Mm. So it feels like it's going to be the same, right? That's what I learned in secondary school also, Ma. That, that is in secondary school, oh, okay? okay? But now we are doing A-level, advanced level, oh, okay. okay? It's different, all right? And I think the, the problem starts right at the start of the reaction, oh, right? Okay. Because right at the start of the reaction, mm. we have to agree that there's a concurrent redox. That's right. Okay, so we look at the cathode first, mm. right? So if you focus on the cathode, we will know that reduction is taking place. Mm -hmm. So we know that copper 2 plus is going to drop, right? The amount of CO2 plus is dropped. The only way for CO2 plus to stay the same is I need CO2 plus to enter the solution as well. That's right. But does that happen right at the start? Unfortunately, because of the presence of a more reactive metal, we say that the zinc or the iron is going to get oxidized first, right? Yep. So let's say in the very first second, uh, as one on one side you're using up the copper two plus to give you your copper, uh, what is being replenished is actually not copper two plus. Correct. You know, it should be the more reactive metal. Correct. Which is iron or uh, zinc two plus, right? Yes. So this actually means that hey, at the start, if I purely zoom into the electrolyte, the concentration of the CO2 plus is going to drop first. Yep, correct. So there will be an initial drop in CO2 plus, but mm. would this happen for long periods? Uh, because our metals are all present in small amounts, so at some point of time, all these reactive metals will be uh, fully oxidized. So, and that is where the copper starts to come in, right? They will start to replenish the copper that was being lost. So this means that if I were to look at the graph of concentration of CO2 plus against time, it will drop initially, but once all the reactive metals are used up, it is going to be horizontal all the way through, right? Yep. Right, so this is how the graph is going to look like, copper 2 plus against time. So just be mindful, right, the initial drop is caused by the more reactive metals getting mm. oxidized, but because they are present in small quantities, then very quickly uh, Cu will enter the solution as well. And this is where every Cu2 plus is lost at the cathode, it's going to be replaced by Cu2 plus that is, uh, gain, that, that, that is produced into the solution at the end. So that's how the graph looks like. Mr. Leong. Hello. I have a secret to share with you. Oh, we'll be serious now, okay. I'm actually not a tutor. Ah, then, then what are you? For the longest time, mm. I've been involved in a secret project by the National Defence Council. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do tell, do tell. The art of electroplating and mm. purifying of copper mm. has been successfully applied to iron. Oh, okay. So right now, mm. iron can be coated not just to objects, mm. but to human as well. What? So the human is now the cathode? Yes, that's right. Okay. And uh, what, what, what was the purpose of coating humans with iron? It's so weird. Because we've been trying to develop our, lo our own local superhero. Oh, they can speak Singlish, ah? Up to them. <gasps> well done, Singapore. Good job, good job. So all this while, mm. I have been the chosen one. And I have been coating myself with iron all these years. So your body is full of iron now? That's right. Oh, is that why your complexion is so good? That's right. And I have a confession and something to announce to everybody today. What is it? I am the Asian Iron Man. Pew pew! Cut! Oh, finally done. Oh, have some uh, tea, Mr. William. Okay. Hey, I cannot drink like that. Oh. Oh, hi. Hello. 